All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started today. Hi, everybody. My name is Melanie Baeza McCray, and I'm the Employer Engagement Coordinator um, here at Mesa College. I work with our work-based learning team and um, work really closely with our career services as well. So today we're gonna be presenting on technical skills um, in this workshop series. Um, some of my presenters here today is going to be Sean and Fawcett, who's our work-based learning coordinator, and Luisa uh, Catarina Barreto Rodriguez, who's our career peer ambassador from the Career Services Center. So thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll go ahead and get started. So our agenda for today is we're going to cover um, what work-based learning means and the types of services that we provide under work-based learning. We're gonna um, go into some of the important pieces and topics on a course syllabus, um, how to read it, how to use it to be the most successful in your class. We're gonna touch on email etiquette when you're communicating with professors and other professionals around your education. Um, we're gonna talk about communication um, both in person and online, and focus a bit on cross-cultural communication as well. Um, so that's going to be the bulk of our uh, presentation for today. So I'm going to go over what work-based learning means. So work-based learning um, also sometimes is called experiential learning. So it's basically learning um, by doing and getting experience on your interests through actual um, practical work. And um, the way we see it at Mesa College, it goes in a type of flow, uh, depending on where you are at in your education. So when you are new to college or you're new to starting to explore what you're gonna do for your career, we call this awareness and exploration. And some of these services that we focus on and we provide um, are, for example, field trips to different job sites. Of course, this is pre-COVID. Um, job shadowing, uh, connecting you with mentors who are in the different industries or professions that you might be interested in. Uh, we offer guest speakers. Um, there's opportunities to maybe take a part in a research project for a certain company or maybe do like a practice uh, research project and other things that are ran by students so that you can get real world experience. Um, Work-based learning also includes employment readiness. So th these are things like helping you with uh, job and career exploration, uh, your resume, your cover letter review, how to prep for an interview. We offer um, different types of workshops and opportunities to talk with career counselors, um, different employers, who are out in the industry can talk to students during information se sessions, um, classroom presentations, and this is where our career services team really rocks and comes into play in helping you be successful. And then we're also um, oversee and try to help and work with our students and our faculty on preparing for work. So this is where um, internship comes into play we have a program on campus called Work Experience where you can get course credit for working at um, a site. We have a service learning program where you can also gain credit for doing volunteer work or um, participating in a service learning project. That can include community service, volunteer, and um, of course there's research. So it really just depends on what you're interested in or what you would like to explore. So that's work-based learning in a nutshell. And um, here's just a part of our team. So we, like I said, we have Sean, um, myself, and Luisa, and Pavel is our internship coordinator who unfortunately can't be here currently, but we're hoping to have an opportunity to get him um, to come and say hello. But right now he um, is not on the, on the call, but he is our internship coordinator. And I guess I would like to have the rest of our team introduce themselves really quick. Hi everyone, my name is Sean Fawcett. I'm one of the work-based learning coordinators at Mesa. I'm also the work experience coordinator on campus. 
Well, hi everyone, my name is Louisa. Like Melanie said, I'm one of the career peer ambassadors at um, a career center at Mesa College. And I'm also one of the um, students of our district as an international student. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and get started with the presentation today. Um, so first up, we're going to talk about what is a syllabus. Um, so most of you, uh, if not all of you, are enrolled in classes. Um, this is probably one of the first documents uh, that you'll see as a student uh, that's coming from your faculty member in each of your classes. Um, so looking at a syllabus, uh, it, you want to think of it as a contract between your faculty members, so your professor, instructor of your class, and their students. Uh, it's designed to give an overview and expectations for what the class is going to entail, um, and that will typically cover your assignments, due dates, deadlines, um, basically all of the fun and important information that you need to know about your class. Um, you will most likely see the, a different syllabus for every class that you take, so it's really important that you review the syllabus um, in full detail for each course that you're currently enrolled in. So the, what is the purpose of a syllabus? Um, so again, it's covering just information about your class. Um, basically, you want to think of it almost as like the guidelines of everything that you need to know um, going into the course and then also want to be able to refer to it throughout the, the term. Um, expectations from the instructor, but also expectations from you as a student for the instructor. Um, and then also what you're going to be learning in the class and everything that you're going to, all the skills that you're going to walk away from for that particular section. So components of a syllabus. Um, so first and foremost, you're going to have um, the objectives, learning objectives. So you'll see that um, most often highlighted usually um, in the front portion of your syllabus. Um, this is kind of the go-to for our faculty when they're designing a class. Um, they will design all of the assignments, the readings, the lectures, everything that you're going to be doing in the course is going to be focused around those objectives. Um, you can kind of go there and see that information up front to know what it is that you can expect um, to learn or to be able to do as a part of that section. Um, next, you'll see content and course details. Um, so this is the information and the subject uh, matter area that you can expect to cover and again what you're going to be learning in the class. Activities. Um, so that is what you can expect to be doing. So again, any type of assignment or reading, um, whether it be lectures, um, sometimes you'll have online discussions, especially in this virtual format. Um, so it's really nice to, to review that information up front so you know oh, on what days you're going to be doing certain things, what you're going to be learning, um, and so you have just a heads up before you get into the actual class. And then lastly, you'll see assessments. Um, this is going to tell students how they are expected to demonstrate their learning. So this happens in a variety of ways. Um, you're probably most familiar with tests or essays or projects. Those are pretty common throughout uh, most classes. Um, however, it can be a lot of different ways that uh, professors can assess your learning. Sometimes they may ask you to write an essay. Um, sometimes uh, develop a portfolio or a poster board. Um, sometimes Sometimes, maybe in this virtual format, you'll even be asked to provide a video of yourself explaining what you learned in the class. Um, so one is not necessarily better than the other type of assessment, um, but you do want to, again, review this ahead of time so you know what to expect and how to prepare um, so that you'll be successful in each of your classes. So uh, the syllabus structure is pretty standard um, and actually through our district, through San Diego Community College District, we have kind of a, a standard format um, and specifically at Mesa College of what faculty have to include within a syllabus. Um, and so you'll see kind of um, some commonalities between each of your classes. Um, the professor does have creative um, rights so they can you know make it uh, colorful they can add pictures they can add quotes um, so you may see some of that within your courses which is great because it makes it a little bit fun more fun to read uh, but overall you're going to see at the top um, the title of the course so not only the course number and uh, name but you'll also see the instructor information so who is your instructor uh, their contact information so typically email um, often phone number as well. Um, and then you'll also see office hours. Um, those are uh, an opportunity for you to meet with your professor outside of your normal class time. 
Um, obviously during COVID and since we are all virtual during this time, um, those office hours will be virtual. So most often um, you can meet with your faculty member over Zoom or a phone call. Um, sometimes you'll see that they'll list specific days and times that they're gonna be available. So maybe they'll list their Zoom contact information. You just hop in, get to ask a question, and then you can um, hop out. Uh, other times your professor may ask you to email them directly to set up a specific appointment time for office hours so you can ask direct questions. Um, there is no right or wrong way to do that. It's just kind of a preferred method um, for the faculty member, but you do want to pay attention to that. Um, as I mentioned, you'll see uh, the course description. So that is what you'll uh, witness in the catalog. Um, so again, kind of just an overview about what the class is going to entail those objectives of what you're going to be learning in the course, all of the content and course details, activities, assessments, um, and then most importantly, one of the uh, most important things on the syllabus is our policy on plagiarism. So the ability to uh, make sure that you're providing original content um, and not stealing anyone else's uh, work or research that they previously completed. Next up, um, we have course content and detail. Um, so here you'll see um, obviously the name of the campus. So um, it'll be Mesa College, the semester, the year that you're actually enrolled in the class. Um, you do want to check that. Um, sometimes professors will use the same syllabus semester to semester. So you just want to make sure that you're looking at the correct syllabus. Um, and you can always follow up with your instructor to make sure that the dates and every all the assignments are accurate and up to date. Um, again, you'll see all the important information that we just covered as far as the structure. Um, most importantly, uh, it's going to be course meeting times and location. Um, this is especially important when we are, you know, in our normal setting on campus. If you're going to class, uh, you want to make sure that you're showing up on Monday, Wednesday from 12 to 1 um, and not Tuesday, Thursday from 12 to 1. So you want to pay attention to that. Um, in our virtual format currently, because of COVID, um, you may have what's called a synchronous class, which is where your class meets at a specific day and time. So again, Monday, Wednesday from 12 to 1 on Zoom um, versus an asynchronous class, which is where um, you don't have specific days or times that you're expected to meet your instructor. Um, rather, all of your work and the, the lectures and the assignments that will take place for the course will happen um, at your own pace. So your instructor may post videos, they may post PowerPoints, um, whatever it is that they're hovering uh, within the content of the class, you will see typically through Canvas or uh, potentially is emailed to you as a student. Um, and then you have the luxury of being able to complete those assignments um, at your own pace uh, within the dates of the due dates of the class. Um, again, most important things are going to be the instructor contact information and then the methods of instruction. So you really want to pay, make sure that you're paying attention to and highlighting your um, instructor's contact information. So email, phone number, and then those office hours are going to be probably the most important. Um, especially right now, if they do provide a direct Zoom link for your class, so maybe it's like a, a recurring class, um, make sure you keep note of that or you save it in your calendar so you always have access to it and know where to find it. <clears throat> as far as course objectives and outcomes, so again, this is um, what is the course about? What is the purpose? Uh, what are you learning from this class? The general topics and the focus. Um, and what will you be expected to know? Um, this is really important for students to pay attention to um, because often we take classes because they're a part of our education plan. You know, we rush through the semester trying to get that A or get that grade and turn in all of our assignments. And so we can check off a box that we completed the class and we're working towards that ultimate goal of earning a certificate or a degree in order to graduate. Um, but it is really important for students to be able to reflect on what you're learning in the course. And so always referring to the outcomes is really important um, because then it tells you right then and there what it is that you learned in that particular class and what you'll be able to demonstrate uh, based off your learning. Course materials, um, it's going to vary by class. Um, Primarily, you'll see here um, any of the books or um, potential readings that are required for the class. 
Um, so usually you'll see uh, your instructor will provide the author, the title. Um, they often will provide whether it's uh, how much it costs, if there's a fee associated with the class, um, and where students can find the text. Um, most often students can purchase textbooks through our Mesa College bookstore. Um, and more and more, our MESA faculty are um, offering what's called open educational resources. Um, that is free textbook material for students. Um, and so we really love that. Uh, free textbooks are great. Um, and so if you don't see that in one of your courses, you can always ask your instructor uh, to see how to access something um, for either a limited cost or potentially free through that option. Um, you'll also find uh, potential websites, resources that will be helpful for the class, other materials um, such as lab equipment, art supplies, or software, depending upon the course that you're taking. Course activities. Um, in the syllabus, usually an instructor will provide a tentative calendar of all of the class topics and discussions that you'll see throughout the term and the semester. Um, sometimes this will vary by class. Um, sometimes it may just be a list of all the important dates that you need to know. Sometimes they put it in a table or a chart format. Um, and so it really just depends on each instructor. Um, but in there, you can typically see a week by week or class by class of the information that will be covered. Um, and again, what you will be expected to learn as well as submit as far as your assignment. Um, this is really important to be able to pay attention to, so you know that you're keeping progress within the class um, and that you are uh, turning in all of the assignments that are needed in order that, that are gonna receive a grade. Um, so you do wanna go through your syllabus and either highlight, circle, star, whatever works for you um, to make sure that you uh, put all of those dates into a calendar or your phone um, of when all of your projects or assignments are gonna be due. Um, and also any dates or special events that are going to be really important. So uh, listed here, field trips, if we're on campus or different um, activities or events that the instructor may want you to attend. Um, other important dates to include are the add drop deadline for a class, uh, which is typically two weeks after the term begins. Um, and also the withdrawal date. Um, so it's really important to add those into your calendar if for whatever reason you're getting through the class and maybe it's not working out as great as you thought, um, you still wanna have the opportunity to withdraw from the class and not have it impact your uh, course record um, and potentially impact your GPA either. Um, so those are really important deadlines. And if you have questions about those, um, I definitely suggest reaching out to the counseling department because they can review what that means um, and how uh, students can go about withdrawing from a class. So course assessments, I uh, touched on this a little bit earlier. So again, um, assessments are gonna vary depending upon the class and the instructor that you're taking. Um, most often you'll see exams or quizzes. Those can be multiple choice. They can be fill in the blank. Um, they can be short answer. So it really just depends again on the instructor, but it's the opportunity for you to be able to demonstrate your learning within the class. Um, other times they'll have um, other assignments, as I mentioned, um, assessments such as projects or portfolios, papers. So again, just a different way and a different format for you to be able to explain what it is uh, that you're learning and the skills that you've developed over time. Another section of the syllabus that's really important to review is uh, rubrics within your classes. Um, sometimes you'll see this in your uh, overall syllabus. Other times your instructor may provide a rubric for each individual assignment that you'll be submitting. Um, so rubrics are basically an opportunity for you to know what it is that your instructor will be grading and how they will be grading. So this is almost like a cheat sheet for students to know how, if you want to get an A, how to make sure that you do that. Um, or if you're just shooting for, you know, you want to pass a, a particular assignment, then you need to be able to uh, make sure you're checking off all the boxes to be able to do so. So you can see within this sample rubric, it gives you um, an opportunity to receive excellent, which is most likely going to equate to an A grade. Um, you would need to provide uh, details related to the introduction, body paragraphs, examples, conclusion, et cetera, um, that highlight everything in that checkbox um, on the left-hand side. 
Um, and so you'll see similar rubrics for that for each of your assignments. Um, and if your instructor doesn't provide a rubric, you can always ask for one. Um, and that's really important too, because you want to go into assignment um, knowing exactly what the expectation is and how you will be graded on certain uh, assignments. Next in the syllabus, you'll see course policies. Um, and so here you're going to find um, grading procedures from an instructor. Um, so this explains how, again, the, the instructor will be graded, um, whether they're going to use a curve or um, an absolute scale for um, determining what your uh, percentage is on a particular assignment. Um, they'll also list uh, the drop policy, uh, attendance, uh, tardiness, so if they have any of those requirements. Um, and oftentimes some faculty will give points for attendance, so it's important that you review this information to know. Um, whether you're you coming to class or you logging into zoom is actually going to help or uh, impact your grade in any way. Uh, you'll also see class participation in rules. So again, the think of the syllabus as a contract between you and your instructor. Um, and so what is the expectation that the instructor has of you as a student, as well as vice versa, what are they going to do for you um, as far as teaching the class and providing a learning environment uh, for the particular section. Um, they'll also have details in regards to missing an assignment or makeups. Um, so if you know that you're going to be out or out of town or on vacation or, you know, uh, have a medical procedure, uh, you need to be aware of what those policies are so you can communicate that with your instructor. Um, you just want to make sure that you're always um, on top of it and staying uh, up to date with any policies that may impact your overall uh, success in the class and your overall grade as well. Um, other things to keep an eye on are extra credit learning opportunities. Uh, that's always important, especially if you are nearing the end of the semester and you need a couple extra points to boost your grade. Um, so what opportunities can you engage in or additional assignments can you complete in order to um, help improve that grade? Um, and then lastly, just accommodations for students with disabilities, standards for academic honesty and plagiarism, and then a uh, course disclaimer. So if there's any uh, details within the syllabus that are subject to change, uh, that is at the purview of the instructor. So although the syllabus is a contract, um, the instructor does have the ability, you know, a couple weeks into the semester to be able to adjust dates or assignments um, depending upon their prerogative. So you do want to make sure that you are staying up to date on all that information, especially within this virtual environment. Um, and so you'll often see maybe an email or updates from the instructor regarding any of those changes. You'll also see listed in the syllabus course and campus resources. Um, so these are um, potentially tips for success. So um, how to approach the course. Um, often instruct in, instructors know what type of teacher they are. Um, and so they'll give you tips on how to do well, how to be successful. So if um, they say that they, you know, they may provide a lot of reading um, within the class. They may um, give some tips on how to break that up so that you're able to tackle those assignments and still be successful um, within your learning development. Um, so you'll also see time management, preparing for exams. So definitely review that information. Uh, you may see a glossary of technical terms. Um, this definitely happens, especially with, within uh, some of our technical courses. So if it's like an introductory class, um, you want to make sure that you read through the glossary so you know what you're reading um, and you're familiar with all of the terminology and vocabulary that you see throughout the syllabus. You'll also see um, important links or resources. So again, that may um, allow you access to Canvas or certain um, web-based resources that will be helpful as a, uh, throughout the course. Most faculty will also provide links to our student support services that are on campus. So um, we have probably over 50 programs and support services that are available to students. So um, if there is anything that you ever need help with, whether it be financial support or um, career resources, you can always reach out to um, student services and they will be able to assist you and support you within that um, aspect of your educational path as well. 
Um, then lastly, um, you'll see student rights and responsibilities. So again, just the expectations for you as a student, um, and if there's any policy that will um, impact you within the, the particular class. And now I'm going to pass it over to Lisa uh, as one of our students and to be able to give her perspective on what it's like uh, reviewing a syllabus for a particular class. Yeah, thank you. Um, definitely as a student, I felt like I was watching a review of everything that I had to learn by myself. So it's great to see that all planned out um, and to see that um, hopefully some other people, some other students will take those tips and help them. And to piggy off, piggyback off, off of the, the part that you were saying about um, the responsibility and what the syllabus has that um, puts the responsibility in the student. It's one of the main things that I was um, thinking about talking and would be like great for new students and or mature students, it doesn't really matter, is that the syllabus is, it goes both ways. So it's a responsibility for the students because it's gonna, like, like Sean said, it has the assignments that you'll probably have to do, the due dates that you'll probably have to meet, and obviously that, that might change, but usually that's a, a very um, set and good parameter for you to have, but also it gives you reliability. So you'll have a um, contract, like Sean was saying, that says that the professor has this planned out and this is what you should expect. And um, with the with some changes or anything like that, that might happen that sometimes happens, especially in COVID area um, era that usually um, happens a little, but it gives you a good um, perimeter for you to base yourself on and and organize yourself to be successful throughout the whole semester throughout the whole class. And with that, um, talking about organizing, one of the main key points that I feel like it's so important as soon as you get your syllabus is to highlight all that is important to you. If something um, is as this is as subjective as it gets. Um, if something is important to you, but not necessarily important to another student, that's um, part of it. And you should focus on what's important to you. Like Sean was saying, if you know you're gonna travel, well, probably not in COVID era, era but if you know you're gonna have a um, doctor's appointment, you're gonna miss that class or uh, that day, I'm gonna have a family gathering or whatever it is, you wanna make sure to um, organize yourself prior to that and make sure that you know if it's going to be an assignment that you're going to have to do earlier than what you usually would do. Um, and obviously, like I was saying and, and put in the slide, it's great to have a physical highlighter or in the in, in um, online era, if you have an iPad or something that you can highlight electronically and that can stand out to you as soon as you open the syllabus or you're um, reviewing something. That's very, very important and very, very helpful. Um, some, sometimes, um, sometimes a, a couple of semesters, I uh, wouldn't necessarily do that the first week. Oh yeah, I, I got it, this, this class is good, I like it. But then that goes beyond if you like the class or not, if you're very interested in the class or not, that goes into you yourself as a student being um, as, as organized as you can be and um, having in, in mind that this is, you, the syllabus has all the responsibilities and give you responsibilities to keep track of that. And lastly, um, as you can see of the, the little samples that I included in the slide, I added a couple ways for you to keep track of that because you don't know what you don't know, right? Sometimes I would hear people, oh yeah, you have to be organized, but never gave me the resources or how can I be more organized? So Google Calendar, most of us, especially as students, we do have Gmail, which is great because that allows you to have free access to Google Drive and Google Calendar. Um, that's just a, a sample that I got from Google, from Google itself, but um, Google Calendar is a great way because it shows you um, exactly what you have from like months prior and like I, I keep repeating, you're organizing yourself, which is a great way for you to um, guarantee your success in the class. It allows you to um, highlight it in different colors. So for example, in my experience, particularly um, class, I always put in green or blue, depending on um, the area of the class. So um, humanities or, or science, for example. Work, I include in another 
um, color yellow because I'm a career fair ambassador. So um, keeping the theme and then personal things I put in blue. So I have everything color coded in a way that at first you might think it's too much work. I'll be fine with just one color, but in the long haul, um, once you get the hang of it, it'll be so, so, so good for you to keep yourself organized. Like I, I keep saying, and um, it's going to stand out to you as soon as you open your um, calendar. If you don't like necessarily the online and um, completely like a virtual planners, you can go to like a monthly planner. Um, our friend Google, but also Pinterest is a great um, they're both a great resources for you to find templates and sam samples as well for you to um, base yourself on that um, just like the other um, sample that I included monthly of the monthly planner they have mm -hmm. weekly planners too if you want to print that out and do it yourself by hand that's also really good so um, yeah like I keep saying organize yourself and use that syllabus and syllabi if you have multiple questions which brings me to the last point of the slide is one of the main things that you want to do especially in the first weeks that you don't necessarily have a bunch of quizzes already or a bunch of essays to work on is to work on um, creating your own um, schedule your own syllabi in your own calendar and grab all the syllabi highlight as much as you want or the, the way you want to do it like Sean was saying a star a circle however you um, it fits your personality and your student persona and um, include everything even if that changes and you have to go back and change that um, later on in the semester um, gathering all of them all the syllabi and making your own calendar with so for example, next week, I know, obviously, this is just an example. Next week, I have this class with one quiz. This class, I have an essay to, to um, an essay due date. And I have that all in the same spot instead of having to keep reminding myself to go from syllabus to syllabus and um, potentially even miss a date. So, so that was great to have all of them together. So um, as being organized, that brings us to email etiquette. Um, one of the main, main um, places that, uh, one of the main resources they're gonna have is the email and the, the main contact um, like place for you to contact your professor will be their email. Um, obviously, like Sean was saying, it's gonna be on top of your syllabus um, mostly um, a lot of professors are putting in the Canvas shell also because that's the main part, the main um, place everybody's going to since um, COVID. Um, but yeah, so with the email etiquette, um, it's very important, especially when you're just starting your um, um, college career, you're, you're a freshman or you're, you're just coming from potentially a career change or anything. It's very important to keep um, a certain etiquette when emailing. So, um, for example, the first point says use a professional email address. It's very common. <laughs> Even me as a student, I know I've had those emails of babygirl at hotmail.com. And as fun as those are, um, not necessarily, they're not necessarily something you want to use when contacting a potential um, um, professor or maybe even um, career wise, a potential employer or, or something like that. So um, feel free to obviously Gmail is free. So feel free to maybe create another one that another email, another Gmail, if you like that, to only keep all your professional and um, college related things. Um, which, like I said, like I was saying on organizing, it's a great place to keep everything together and um, not miss anything. And like, and like the first point was saying, it keeps it professional and not um, some baby girl beer lover at hotmail.com. Um, secondly, include a clear direct subject line. Um, Sean already kind of um, pointed that out, which is very important. Um, a lot of times, especially nowadays, that students are um, using even more email since we don't have the the person-to-person -person interaction. Um, 
professors are getting very usually a lot of emails all the time. So it's very important for you to even look into your syllabus. Sometimes the professors now they're starting to include exactly what they want you to put in your subject line to make it clear, concise and to the point. And it'll help you because you'll um, show the professor exactly who you are, exactly the class you're in, and um, what's the purpose of the email. But it also, it'll help the professor because they'll um, be able to recognize that that student of that class needs help, and um, it'll, um, they'll be able to um, get to that email instead of letting it go to spam or let it, um, let it uh, be forgotten. Um, thirdly, think twice before hitting reply all. That's very important too. Sometimes um, as a student, you just hit reply and you don't realize that that's actually a chain with a bunch of professors or a bunch of students or something. And if you're um, potentially talking about something very personal or um, a personal time that you wanna have with the professor to talk about something that's happening with your life and maybe um, something um, connected to uh, a privacy, something connected to um, having more privacy or something like that, that's very important for you to always double check um, to see if you um, are potentially sending that to a bunch of people and not just to the person that you actually want to send that. And lastly, include a signature block. That's also very important um, to even earlier in your maybe career, maybe college career for you to um, um, stick to a couple of names, potentially your first and last name. I'm Latina, so I have a bunch of names and I've, I had a, a very hard time figuring out which names I'm, I was going to include and which names I was going to stick to, but it's very important for you to stick to that name so you can be recognizable, not just to your professors or your faculty or your student services staff that um, you'll hopefully get resources from, but also um, later on when you go into the workforce to, for your um, employers and, and people that you contact for them to recognize your name and your, um, which will be included in the signature block at the end of your email. Um, and also with Gmail, you can make that um, automatic, which is very helpful as well. So you don't have to um, potentially miss that when you're sending a quick email. They'll also be um, always in the end of the email. Generally, this would state your full name, potentially your first and last name, um, your, your title. If you're a student, um, you're not necessarily, you don't have to put that if you're talking to a professor, um, company, college name, and your contact info, including a phone number. So next slide. Awesome. More tips. So. Um, first off, briefly introduce yourself. Um, that will also sometimes be um, expressed in the syllabus. The professor will ask, like, um, like Sean was saying, they sometimes have Monday, Tuesdays, but also Tuesday and Thursday. So it's good, good. Um, it's good to have in mind that you want to make sure that they know exactly what class you're in. So briefly introduce yourself. First class name, um, your class you're into. Um, their class you're into and the um, meeting times, if you have meeting times, obviously. Um, don't email angry, that's a very nice way to put it, but um, it's always good to, even if you're, ha especially when you're having like some sort of misunderstanding, um, especially I know we just um, went through a very hard transition going fully remote in the middle of a semester. And as a student, I know I, I had my angry days that I had to relax and take a step back and maybe not send that email right away because that influences a lot more than you think. Sometimes you may think, oh yeah, I've, I'm professional, I'll be able to send this email right now, but, um, and don't realize some words and some, some wording actually, not necessarily that you're gonna put harsh words, but some type of wording of the sentence that you wouldn't necessarily use if you were a more relaxed and a more um, understanding perspective of the whole situation. Um, respond in a timely fashion. That's very important and not just for you as a student to um, be um, like keep in mind that you're you have 24 to 48 hours but also the other year around. The professors like I was saying um, and more than the professors, the staff members, service, uh, student services 
um, people and so on and so forth are being bombarded with a bunch of emails. So to, to understand that maybe they just got out of their work hours or they have a class right now, they won't be able to um, get to your email in like 30 minutes. Um, it's very important. And that goes further into the days, for example, week they are going to have an essay due and um, the day, the night prior, you're sending an email to the professor. Trust me, I've had those days as well. I was like, I don't really know what this means in the rubric and I want to ask them. But unfortunately, once you do the, the, the assignments, once you leave the assignments for the last minute, for example, that usually happens. And even if you email the professor at um, exactly when you think about it, they won't necessarily have the time and the um, um, availability to get back to you um, as quickly as you want them to. So always make sure to um, respond to your emails in a timely fashion, but also expect them to um, do the same way and um, get back to you whenever they can between 20, usually 24 to 48 hours. Next, um, be careful with confidential information. That's also very important, um, especially now with um, everything going online. There's some things that you potent would potentially talk about in person, but that wouldn't be um, at so smart for you to put into um, a Canvas email or even a, a normal email when talking to your professor or whoever. So be mindful of that to um, be mindful of the type of information you're giving and what type of information you're putting out in the um, dark, dark world of the internet. Um, and lastly, avoid using shortcut, shortcuts to real words. Um, and that's also very important, not just when contacting professors, but also um, when doing your resumes, I am a career and pre-ambassador, so I would have to talk about resumes, obviously. Um, at least we see a lot of students um, putting, for example, ADT instead of associate's degree of transfer. And you think that might be um, a um, not so serious issue, but it's actually um, a good rule of thumb to, even if you're going to the field that um, would know the, the, the shortcut or would know the little slang or jargon, it's very important, important and even professional of you to always um, go for the long um, proper way to say something. Not necessarily long, but actually proper way to um, say something on your emails as well. So next slide. So um, going, well, yeah, that one. So um, going off of that as well, use professional, like I was saying, being professional and um, you never, um, usually not using slang or, or shortcuts, use professional salutations. That's very important too. Even, and, and I would add, even if the professor says them, because <laughs> sometimes the professor wants to be like um, closer and feel um not so distant from the students and sometimes they would got use hey guys or hi everyone hi peeps or something like that i've had all of those professors say something like that but um it's very important for you as a, a student and as a professional to use hi doctor that's something that i've i've started to pay attention to as a student myself um especially in community college sometimes you don't really know if they have a phd or not um going back to your syllabus that usually has the syllabus usually has the if they have the PhD or not. So it's usually very um, respectful and professional of you to say um, hi, Dr. Um, Fawcett. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case, but um, just an example. But um, it's usually good instead of just going um, to professor somebody, it's always, um, I feel like the professors feel differently towards you when you say doctor, because you it's like a, a recognizing um, their their work, the, the work they, they have put into class and the field that you're um, studying. 
So next, use exclamation points sparingly, and I chuckle when I say that because I've definitely been one of those people that have used like two or three um, exclamation points because I'm that extroverted. But um, it's always important, like I was, I keep repeating, to be professional and um, and you by all means show your excitement, but um, maybe use one <laughs> or um, just in a couple parts of the the paragraph. So. Um, it doesn't become unprofessional and, and too colloquial. Um, next, know that people from different cultures speak and write differently. And that's a huge shout out to me. I'm actually an international student from Brazil. So that's something that I really had to learn because sometimes um, you think, because we don't have the same culture, we don't have the same background and um, in the, the usually our first language is not going to be English if you're talking about um, other other um, people from different countries or even international students as I am one. Um, it's important to realize that even if that sentence might come out harsh to you, um, it's, it's, it's something that you might think of when talking about cross-cultural communication is that maybe that person um, didn't intend that, and maybe in even your ling their language, their um, native language, um, that doesn't come off the same way as in English. And I've had that happen a couple times. I would say something, even in my personal life, I would say something in a certain way that maybe in English didn't translate well. And so it's it's important to keep that um, in mind. I know I have, we have a lot of our um, professors that are not um, that they don't have the, the first language as English. So it's important to, to keep that in mind, especially sometimes being a freshman and coming from your uh, bubble. Um, it's important to keep um, the cross-cultural and, and open diversity aspect um, in mind when talking about um, communication, especially in, in emails. So next. This is just a quick, um, quick sample. Um, Sean was kind enough to um, take a screenshot and show this. Like I was saying, this is Gmail. We usually, um, as students, we usually use Gmail. So, um, and net, thank you. That's a sample of writing an email um, from. You would include the email of your professor or your employer, depending who you're sending the email to. Um, and like I was saying that usually you have that on the syllabus to your email address, um, recipient person you're contacting the professor and then subject single line or of text email recipients see when they see re receive your email, the subject line will be the place that you would include the um, potentially if the syllabus says or even if the professor mentions that um, in their first day, the the class name, the the time that you meet, if you meet in the subject as in, um, for example, um, assignment questions or deadline questions or something in that sense. And then your email message, what you want to communicate to um, the recipient person you're contacting, um, Sean Fawcett and the email, that's a uh, email signature name or information you want to display. And obviously, like just like Google Docs and Word, you have formatting options, um, which is usually good to um, like. In, and I would say, just like um, exclamation points, use that sparingly. But it's usually good to um, grab their information and, and um, highlight something important. Next, um, yeah, so like I was saying, Canvas is been, it's been a, a big part of how um, we communicate with our professors. So I took um, this screenshot, I just did a very simple um, sample of me, for example, if I was a student communicating with Sean Fawcett as a, a, a faculty, um, the way you get to that, I'm, sh I'm it's kind of not that highlighted, but the left bar, the gray bar that you see, that doesn't go away in any page of your Canvas shell. So you can um, access that if you're in your assignments page, your grades page, in any Canvas shell you're in. Um, and that the course where it says course and then fall 2020, you would choose the professor and the class that you wanna contact 
two that would um, usually automatically change, but obviously double check if you want to make sure you want to always want to make sure that you're contacting the right professor. And um, you choose the, the professor's name, the subject, just like email, um, be professional, be precise and include what the professor wants you to include. Um, and then the the um, professional um, way for you to um, include include a message. Like I said, this is just a sample. So hi, Professor Fawcett. And then um, some, some other things, including um, thank you so much, like being appreciative is very important as well. And then your signature. And then next, we have um, the same thing, but for phone, um, just like any app that changes a little from um, your computer to your phone. So in the same way on your the the photo the screenshot on the right you can see the little arrow um that usually um i i don't believe it goes away anyways just like the the one in the the computer but in any case you can always go back to your dashboard and click on inbox and that will take you to the left um picture the left screenshot where you can include the the class the professor's name your subject and then your professional um, email. This one, I just included a, a little um, uh, question being, hi there, Professor Fawcett, like we were saying, being formal and professional, could you confirm the deadline to submit my last essay of the semester? That's a very good deadline for you to keep in mind. Um, and then the rest of the email and the signature like we've been saying. Awesome. Thanks, Louisa. Um, so those are some great tips from a student perspective on how to be successful within a class, um, especially looking at um, your syllabus and then also to stay organized and also communicating with your instructor through email. Um, one of the things that Louisa mentioned um, several times was how to communicate via Canvas, which is our online platform through Mesa and our community college district. Um, and so we just wanted to point out some tech resources in case this is your first time taking an online class or first time utilizing Canvas, or even if you're a, a seasoned student um, and you have some tech issues. Um, one of the great things about Mesa um, is that our tutoring center, our MT2C, um, is offering tech tutor support. Um, and so students can access that via Canvas um, or on their website. Um, but the great part about it is that it's actually live tech support. So students can um, see the hours listed here Monday through Thursday and then also on Friday. Um, so you can just click on that Zoom link um, and you'll be able to uh, direct it to a tech support. Um, and so if you have a question about how to send an email or check an assignment or just anything related to Canvas, um, you can definitely utilize this platform. Um, you can also call or email them. Um, and it's actually not just for Canvas. You can um, also ask questions about any type of um, software program that tech typically we use within uh, Mesa in our online instruction. So whether that's Word or Excel, PowerPoint, Publisher, um, even on Zoom, if you have questions about how to interact or maybe um, write a chat message, you can utilize this platform. So it's a really great resource for our Mesa students. Um, so definitely take advantage of it. Um, so today we did present on a lot of content um, that will hopefully allow you to be successful within your online classes. Um, we do have some additional information um, talking about how communication really helps you um, as a student, um, but because we are short on time today, what we're going to do is go ahead and end this session um, and we're going to record our um, communications workshop and be able to share that out with um, our um, programs across campus so students can view it. Um, we'll cover in that, as Melanie mentioned earlier, um, communications as a student, but also um, developing your communication skills to help you beyond MESA um, as you enter the workforce and become uh, an employee within the workforce. Um, we'll also talk about uh, cross-cultural communication, um, as well as how to interact on campus and off campus. Um, so it'll be, be a really great opportunity and resource for students to view that. Um, but again, because of time, we're going to go ahead and record that at a later date and we'll share that out with the campus. So thank you so much for those of you that attended and also those that are uh, watching virtually. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact the Workbase Learning team um, or our Career Center and we'll be happy to assist you. Um, but again, we'll share out these links uh, shortly. Thank you so much. Oh, 
Melanie, do you want to stop it?